So hello everybody. Um, today I want to talk to you about the bait and switch that is going on in Belgium. And it's absolutely crazy what is going on actually, because um, Belgium, they get about 50 to 60% of all the, their electricity from uh, the dual and Tihange nuclear power plants. In total, these two power plants have seven pressurized water reactors. And currently, there's a debate going on whether they can save, save uh, one or two of them. And so what happens is the Belgian, uh, so the Be Belgian government, basically the Belgian governance looks like this. Uh, they have a federal system. And then uh, Belgium is basically partitioned into two smaller semi countries right so you have the french speaking part and you have the the dutch speaking part so the federal minister of energy is a green activist uh her name is tina van der straten she has been a lawyer for gas companies for years and now she has entered politics and she was elected and the the powers that be put her in office so what she did was she basically from the get-go she made sure that none of the nuclear reactors in in, in dual or tihange could be saved in any way shape or form and now um ng who is the owner of the plants uh, says well we don't want to prolong any of them because the window for doing so has been closed. Now, I don't agree with this. Um, I, I do understand their position, obviously, because the political reality is that the plants will be closed. Um, you know, even, even the technical reality is that they need to be closed because uh, they can be saved but it requires large overhauls you know they need to refurbish these plants significantly so this is going to take hundreds of millions to to to, to keep these nuclear power plants in running shape so what happens now is let's let's assume that these plants are going to close which is a very close reality it's 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 almost there um Belgium needs something else, right? So they have discovered that um, running the country on wind and solar is impossible. They simply do not have the space required to do so. So the first thing that they are doing is they are going to say, okay, let's 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 import uh, electricity from France, Germany, the Netherlands, and England you know, during these periods that we don't have uh, enough electricity production of our own. Uh, also, they're building new gas plants. And that, that, that's critical. They are planning new gas plants and they're planning enough capacity to replace the nuclear power plants. And this minister has the audacity to say, well, uh, even though we are building new gas plants, these are not going to increase our emissions because of the, you know, European uh, emissions trading uh, scheme, which is a ridiculous. It's a ridiculous notion. You build gas plants, you're going to put CO2 in the atmosphere. It's that simple. And especially when you had a firm base load source uh that was that was providing you know more than half of all the electricity that you needed now there are some clowns in belgium who say okay you know they tried to marginalize the role of the nuclear power plants and they, they take they take the the position of uh, looking at it from a primary energy perspective which means that all the energy input that's put into the belgian economy is counted so by that measure the current nuclear power plants deliver like 10 to 12 maybe 13 percent of their primary energy and if you would save one or two of these um it would would only be like one or two percent 
of the total energy disposition of Belgium, which they tend to say is like a pixel. Okay, you're trying to save a pixel. This is totally ridiculous. But let's talk about the bait and switch. So what is currently happening, and we saw this happening around COP, you know, the COP that was held in Scotland. Um, they're trying to do all these charming news stories, you know, like uh, uh, when there's a COP, people from all over the world come gather to talk about their plans to alleviate the climate crisis. And there's also a lot of people from developing countries there who want to seize the opportunity. Now, don't get me wrong. I do believe that developing countries have earned the right to participate in this thing. But there's a level of simplicity there that is just... I mean, I don't get it. So what has been put onto paper, in the papers, is that Namibia... Namibia is going to produce hydrogen using solar power plants and is going to fill ships with this hydrogen in one form or another and send these ships to both the Netherlands and Belgium. Now, from a from a an energy efficiency perspective, this is horrible. I mean, who in their right mind would think of such a thing? And I will make a separate video explaining what is wrong about it. The other news that Belgium has shared is that they 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 signed an MOU together with Denmark, and they said, "Okay, we are going to build a subsea cable so we can buy Danish wind electricity straight from Denmark." So that's the other thing. So that's the nice part of it you know that's okay they say okay we need to we need to import a lot of electricity from Belgium, from france germany and the netherlands because we probably won't be capable to produce our own electricity anymore at least not in sufficient quantities then they say okay we will be importing hydrogen gas from uh namibia and we will buying uh a wind electricity from denmark now, this is the bait. The switch is following. They know they can't get enough from either Denmark or Namibia. They know it. I mean, any sane person who can do a little math knows that this is a pipe dream. So they're going to move forward with building these natural gas plants, and they're handing over the keys to the vault to Russia. Because Russia is the only country that can deliver gas in sufficient quantities to power the Belgian economy. And we're still only talking about power of route electricity right now. Imagine how much other, you know, non-fossil input that they need just to get, you know, all their industry decarbonized, uh, their transportation. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. So um, currently, Belgium is in a very, very, very bad position, and I wanted to share share this with you. I'm going to make a couple more videos explaining somewhat more in depth, but I want to keep this short and simple. So uh, yeah, that's that's the situation. I went to Belgium yesterday, made some beautiful shots, helped a friend of mine do some interviews, and. Uh, we will keep fighting the good fight, trying to keep the nuclear power plants running, trying to get new nuclear power plants built. And in the end, we may be successful, we may not, but, you know, this is a fight that is worth fighting. So thank you all for watching and have a nice day. Bye-bye.